Well everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and compare the iPhone 14 Pro against one of my favorite iPhones, the iPhone XR, and see which specific phone you should go and pick up. Now both these phones will be linked down in the description. You can get them from there, you can help support the channel at the same time. Now side by side, you can definitely tell that both these phones are a little bit different. The iPhone XR came out in 2018, and it was supposed to be kind of like a budget tier iPhone. It was $750 at that time, and this iPhone since then has gone down in price quite a bit. You can probably find these things all over the place for less than $300, which is really nice. On the front, you had a 6.1 inch Retina IPS panel, and this was one of the more controversial aspects to this display. You still have a notch up top, which is very same on a lot of other iPhones. Compared to now, you have a pretty thick bezels around this phone too, so that's probably another thing to keep in mind. But it's not an ugly phone, and I still think it looks fairly well for this day and age. For the iPhone 14 Pro, on the other hand, you have a newer type of design. I'll drop this phone. It is a 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED panel, and this is a pretty good screen. I mean, this is a the same size as the iPhone XR display, but it's in a much slimmer packaging, which is nice. There's less bezel overall. You're also getting a lack of a notch, and you can now getting this dynamic island, which I think is really, which I think is really cool. So you can go ahead and utilize the dynamic island for whichever ways you can. So that in and of itself is really awesome. And the display is nice. Pro motion at 120 hertz as well. It's definitely a much better panel, and you know for sure it's a better looking phone than the iPhone XR for sure. Now in terms of thinness and thickness between both, you can kind of see that I think the iPhone 14 Pro is a thicker phone. You can also see how the camera module protrudes a lot more on the iPhone 14 Pro than the iPhone XR. Now I will say the XR is not the slimmest phone either, but it does seem a little bit slimmer than the iPhone 14 Pro. You're also getting a lack of a SIM card tray on the iPhone 14 Pro, which is very crazy. I wish they did bring a SIM card tray on this phone, but they didn't, so it is what it is. What are you going to do about it? Now on the back, we have a little bit of a different setup as well. So on the iPhone XR, we had a wide-angle lens, and we had a standard glass back. With the iPhone 14 Pro, we have a wide, ultra-wide, and telephoto lens with a LiDAR sensor and a frosted glass back. So definitely the better build quality goes for the iPhone 14 Pro. Like, it's not even close. The 14 Pro looks very good. It feels very good, and I love that phone for sure. The XR, you know, it's a good phone, but it's definitely dated as compared to these phones nowadays. You're also getting things like the MagSafe wireless charging on the iPhone you know, 14 Pro. You still have wireless charging on the iPhone XR, but you have that MagSafe capability on the 14 Pro, which is really nice. You have 5G on the 14 Pro. You have emergency SOS mode on the 14 Pro with crash detection. There's a lot of cool things for the 14 Pro that the XR doesn't have. But I will say for this phone coming out, you know, four years ago, it still is pretty impressive to see how this phone has held up, you know, through the last few years. So that kind of covers it up there. In terms of software and longevity, the XR is probably going to be the phone that's going to not last as long as the iPhone 14 Pro. It's quite obvious. This phone, to give you some perspective, the iPhone, you know, 10 from 2017 is the lowest supported iPhone. Those That series, the 2017 iPhones, are the lowest supported iPhones right now. These phones came out in 2018. So it's probably safe to say this one is probably going to get another year or two of software updates and then that's it. The 14 Pro is just getting started. This phone is going to be lasting for a long period of time. So I say that to say, if you're planning on getting an iPhone and you want the longest lasting one, the 14 Pro is definitely going to be the one for you. The 10 are, like I said, just getting started. So who knows how long this phone is going to last, but it's not going to be that much longer probably compared to the 14 Pro, but it's still going to be here for the next few years. So in terms of that, that covers it up there as well. Now let's go into a speed comparison between both these phones. The iPhone 10 has that Apple A12 Bionic chip inside of it with 3GB of RAM, where the iPhone 14 Pro has that Apple A16 Bionic chip inside of it with 6 gigs of RAM. So let's go see which one is the faster one between both. Okay, let's get into it. Clearing all the apps in the background, we should get started. So 14 Pro is here, 10R is here. Phone calls 3, 2, 1. A little bit of a glitchy experience on the iPhone 10 I don't know if you guys saw that or not. I don't know why my apps are so cluttered on here. Music 3, 2, 1. We're going to get into a little bit of a different pop-up there. I still think it would have probably loaded faster on the 14 Pro. Let's go into settings, 3, 2, 1. Now, even on an application like that, you can see the differences between both, which is pretty crazy. App Store, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Let's go and hop out of here, scrolling through, see if there's a difference, which I don't know if there's going to be one. Kind of the same thing, not that big of a difference there. Podcast, 3, 2, 1. Okay. 14 Pro is faster, clock 3, 2, 1. Even there, a little bit of a glitch experience to click open the application on the 10R, which is very interesting. Reminders, 3, 2, 1. Okay, 10R was faster there, very, very surprising. Apple TV, 3, 2, 1. Okay, I don't know why this one opened up the news and this one didn't. 
So now we have to do the opposites on both. So let's go on up and up here just to keep it the same. That was very, very weird. I don't know why that happened. Camera, three, two, one. Okay. Another pop up here. Let's go ahead and get into a photo. Let's go ahead and open up that photo. And definitely there, 14 Pro is definitely faster there as well. Photo, three, two, one. It is very interesting. I didn't think there was going to be this big of a difference between both, but there does look like there's a pretty big difference between them. Temple run two, three, two, one. And you can see right here, the 14 Pro is definitely a fast phone for sure. I mean, that is much faster just even from opening up this game. And there's there were a few glitches that happened right there on the iPhone XR as well. So you're definitely getting, in my opinion, a faster performing phone on something like the iPhone XR for sure than something like the iPhone 14 Pro. Or you're getting a much faster phone on the 14 Pro than on the iPhone XR. And even in games like this, it's probably going to be the same exact thing hopping out of here. Let's go and get into Genshin Impact 3, 2, 1. This is a very, very big game. I've played this game on a multitude of different phones, both Android and iOS. And I've gotten pretty good experience on both, even on lower end phones. Like even like the XR, it plays as game pretty well but the difference is is that there's a lot of graphic profiles you can change so on lower graphics it handles it well in the tenor but on the same high graphics the 14 pro is definitely going to be giving you a better experience and that is evident even with this loading speed i mean look how much faster it was to load on the iphone 14 pro than on something like tenor even getting out of that application was a little bit of a slower choppy experience on the iphone you know 10r so i think when it comes down to it the 14 Pro is definitely a far faster phone than the 10 in pretty much every single way. These both are on iOS 16 as well. And, you know, I will say gaming and everything, 14 Pro is going to be better. You can still get good experience from the, you know, 10 but definitely the speed is there for the 14 Pro for sure. Now, in terms of the camera capability, we're getting a triple camera setup on the 14 Pro. So wide, ultra wide, and telephoto lens. The 10R has that standard wide angle lens, which I think is really cool. 4K 60 on the back, 1080p on the front of the 10R, 4K 60 on the front of the iPhone 14 Pro. Now the 10R, like, one of the things about this phone that wasn't the best was the camera. And I remember talking about this camera a lot back in 2018. And a lot of those videos, those camera comparisons ended up getting noticeable amount of views. And I think that's because people really wanted to see how this camera held up with that single lens, you know, so that single lens. And I will tell you, the single lens was good, but compared to a phone like the 14 Pro, it's just not even close, which is a good thing. You know, I think we want the newer phones to be better. This phone has the standard video and photo mode. It has portrait mode, which is nice as well. But beyond that, I mean, it's a very limited camera. We're not getting like that, you know, zoom. We're not getting a lot of capability of zooming in and zooming out. So it's a pretty outdated lens when I kind of think about it. It's not a crazy big deal, but again, it's one of those things to keep in mind. The 14 Pro, on the other hand, is probably one of the better phones, probably one of the best cameras right now too. I mean, this camera has it all. It is a very good camera lens. And this is one of the main reasons you would end up buying this phone is because of the camera. It has that 0.5x zoom, so you can zoom out a lot. It has 15x zoom as well. You can zoom in three, you can zoom in 15x, which is crazy. You have also the same portrait mode, video mode, which is gonna be better quality. You have this new cinematic mode too, which is really awesome. And you have this new action mode as well, which is really cool. It's like stabilization mode for your videos. So I will tell you when it comes down to it, the 14 Pro is definitely by far the better camera. And it's honestly the, just the better phone in general as well. I mean, this is the phone you're going to go ahead and pick up and think to yourself like, wow, this is a solid phone for sure. And this is probably one of the best phones you can buy right now. I think the 10R is great if you currently own it and or if you're trying to get a phone for like a cheaper price, this is still a decent phone. You know, it's not, I wouldn't, it's not really comparable to the 14 Pro, but to like the 14, I think it's like kind of comparable there. And it's still a pretty good phone for the price tag. It's not perfect, but when you consider how cheap this phone is, it's actually not a bad price phone. And I actually do think it's pretty impressive. I would recommend going to the iPhone 11, but this is still a pretty decent price as well. So that kind of covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that'll be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.